Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and I had a question from one of you, and that was how to pass more than 20 fields through the Power Apps V2 trigger. So today, we're gonna do that with some JSON. Let's get into it. So we had a question here from Tyler Durden. Can you make a tutorial on how we can get 20 inputs on the Power Apps V2 trigger? So many people were asking about this Power Apps V2 trigger. Let's go over the V2 trigger again and let's do more than 20 inputs. All right, so we got a brand new Power App here. Let's insert a, let's do a form and let's just, I have a SharePoint list I've already created. It's on my flattened SharePoint site. So flattened, this is from a previous video. Details, SLT, I created a list, there's about 24 fields on here. We'll get them all on here. We'll get a ton of fields. We'll make sure all the fields are on here. Budget, category, client name, cost, contingency, escalation, external. I just started throwing fields together. I couldn't think of enough names, so I just started creating a bunch of names of fields. So we'll count them, make sure we have over 20, because that's the main thing for this Power Apps V2 trigger. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times three. So eight, 16, 24 minus one. And we want to use a Power Apps V2 trigger to send this data. So let's create another screen. One more screen. And this will be our gallery, I guess. We'll just kind of look at the data also. So gallery. The point of this video is not UI UX. We just want to get the functionality right. It's all about using that Power Apps V2 trigger. So we got two rows. We got join Fight Club and don't talk about Fight Club, right? Let's show all the data of one row below here. All right, so I ha since I have 23 fields and I had to create all those fields, we're gonna walk through each one and we're gonna put in Maybe, uh, let's say a rectangle, we'll do a shape, a rectangle. We could probably actually do a container, that'd probably be smarter. We'll do a container, and it'll be a vertical container. Let's just kind of put a container here. All right, so we have a container here. We're gonna take our first field, our text canvas. I'm gonna put it inside the container, and we will stretch it stretch it all the way and then we'll center it. So let's make sure that it is aligned in the center. And then we're gonna go through each of the fields. So first up is gallery one dot selected dot title. All right, so join Fight Club, that's number one. I'm just gonna copy paste here. And I have up on my other screen all the fields so I can click through. So original ID. The next is manager. All right, just copy paste. And this one is details, date, favorite color, favorite food. So I was just putting fields together. You know, I needed 23. So I just started coming up with some favorite sport. We'll keep going. Next we got current sport, secondary color, office location. Paste in here again, external. That's a true false field, P-R-O-I-D. Let's see, can we get, we need to turn on the scroll bar. What I'll do is the container, we can do wrap. Let's see what wrap does. Wrap makes it terrible. Let's turn on the scroll bar. There we go. Now we have a scroll bar, M-I-D, category client name, status, and the rules are, if I have to create 23 fields, you gotta watch me put them in here, or you can just fast forward. Risk level, contingency, no contingency for Fight Club. Es escalation level, and last one are the notes. All right, so we have about 23 fields in here, and you can see this is a multi-line text down here. So let's let's just count them. One, two, three, four, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
12. And true, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. All right, my math was correct. I got 23 fields in here. If we click on a different gallery item, it populates the other ones. Now the goal is here to use Power Apps V2. That's what we want to do. Now we want to use Power Apps V2 to push this somewhere, but just to get the data in Power Automate. So let's take the data and push it to Power Automate. There's a few ways we can do that. We can create a new flow right here in Power Apps. So we can just click on Create New Flow. So this is what most people are talking about is Power Apps V2 is a new way that Microsoft is using, is connecting Power Apps and Power Automate together. There is a limit of 20 fields. Let's see if we keep going, we're almost to 20, there it is. We have now reached the max of 20 fields in Power Apps using the Power Apps V2 trigger. It's a limitation. It's not that big of a deal. We just have to use something that we've been using all the time, and that's JSON. And so we've been going over this for the past few weeks, talking about JSON. Today, let's create our own JSON, right? JSON is just like a format of text. That's all it is. It's just a format of text. Let's create our own JSON and pass it to Power Apps. I'll put the documentation for this in the properties of the video. You can look it up on Microsoft. For this video, let's just keep it simple and do 20 single line text fields, maybe a multi-line text and a cost field. Next week, we can do a choice field, maybe a Boolean field, kind of do these more difficult fields and pass it through the JSON too. So let's create a button, a button. We have a button here and this is gonna create a JSON. Let's just do a simple one for now. I'm gonna create a variable, set v json example i'm creating a variable first it's a global variable just because that's how i want to do it right now and we're going to say json and the data is going to be one two three and i'm going to say flatten values table ending double parentheses so now we've set a json variable and literally all it is is a simple table one, two, three, and it's gonna have value, one, value, two, value, three. We can go back to our flow. Let's see here, send to JSON. We'll call this send to JSON. Let's go back to our flow that we were creating. And for our input, I'm just gonna say it's a text and it's gonna be the JSON. And for our final step, we're just gonna write to SharePoint just gonna keep this simple. You can do whatever action you wanna do with it. If you wanna do HTTP, but I'm just going to create a new row in SharePoint. So create item in my same table that I was at before. Now you can do this in Dataverse, Excel, SQL. People were asking about SQL recently. You know, why people don't do videos on SQL. Microsoft kind of pushes um, most people to go to Dataverse. And to do a video on SQL, there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of setup I need to do. All right, so we have our variable JSON. It's gonna come in. We'll just put in test in here. So we have something in here and we'll hit save. Oh, we probably want to rename our flow. So actually I'm gonna go back to it right now. It's gonna give it like a default name. Let's go back in and rename our flow. Let's give it a Something easy, because we're gonna have to write the name of this flow every time. So right here in the top left corner, we will just call it JSON flow. All right, so that's now the name of our Power Automate. Most likely it will save in our default environment because that's what environment I'm in right now. So now it's going to rename our flow connection here. There it is, JSON flow. So we're gonna set a variable. Right now it's just a simple table, one, two, three. And we're gonna run our flow, JSON, flow.run. It's looking for text and look at what it's looking for. Use the IntelliSense here. It's looking for vjson. That's the name that I gave it in Power Automate, right? That's the name of my variable that I gave it in Power Automate. So I'm gonna take the name of the variable I gave it in Power Apps so maybe I'll, I'll rename this Power Apps. 
This is the name of the variable I have in Power Apps. I'm going to pass it into my flow. So now I'm going to pass a JSON into my flow. And then I'm going to save. We'll just save for now because I, I oversave things. You should too. Click edit. Now we have a variable and maybe we want to rename. Let's rename it to variable JSON power or we'll say automate. So this is the name of our variable in automate. So we're passing from power apps to power automate. And now we're going to parse our JSON or we'll probably we'll run it one time. Let's just test it out real quick because we really want to be able to we want to be able to get one flow so we can automatically generate the schema of our JSON. So we'll leave it as it is. We have that in here. If we hover over now, if we if I remove this again, get that IntelliSense. Now look, it says VJSON Automate. So that's the name of the variable I gave it in, in Power Automate. I'm passing the variable that I created in Power Apps to it. And now I'm going to run it one time. So send to JSON. It should be here in my cloud flow. So here it is, JSON flow. It ran one time, it was successful. It wrote a line to our SharePoint list. I can't really see what I wanna see. So what I need to do is take the output, compose, and I'm gonna compose my VJSON automate variable. I'm gonna hit save. And I'm going to test again automatically with what ran last time. This time we're going to get what I want to see in the compose. And in the compose, I get an output of one, two, three. All right. So we saw how to do it with a simple table. Now with this simple table, what I like to do is I like to create a collection. Let's collect something now. And you can separate this or you could put it all in one button, but we'll just clear collect. And we'll call this, so you're naming your collection, collection, C-O-L, JSON. We'll keep it simple. And what am I going to collect? I'm going to collect the gallery one dot selected. I'm going to collect everything that I've selected in there. And maybe we'll, we'll put this in a separate button for now, just so we can visualize that button or we can visualize that data. So let's add a button. You can combine these later on if you want, but for the demonstration purposes of this video, we're gonna separate it. And when I click on this button, it's gonna collect my entire row. So now when we go to the details of my collection, you can see I have one row and it has all my fields all my fields there. Now I've collected everything in my row. So if I come to don't talk about Fight Club, I click play, I click the button, I then collected that row of data. It's a clear collect, so it will overwrite and we'll only have one row, right? So we have one row, this brings over everything from SharePoint. So I'm gonna collect everything and then for my variable now, I'm going to do JSON again. And we're going to pass in the collection, collection JSON. That's the one we just collected. Because I'm using SharePoint as my data source, there's a few things that won't pass over. So if you did this manually and you picked each one of the columns, you may not need this. But what we need is JSON. We need to ignore unsupported types and JSON ignore binary data. There's one more format that I like to do on the JSON and that is the indent for I feel like that just helps me organize it I can see it better so the indent for these are the three I'm going to do ignore unsupported types ignore binary data and indent for and you may even want to do flatten value tables I feel like those are the four that I normally use with SharePoint now you can experiment how you want to pass your JSON to Power Automate but that's how we're gonna do it for now. So we're gonna collect, don't talk about Fight Club, send the JSON over to Power Automate, and let's take a look at that run. All right, our flow ran. Let's take a look at the output of the compose statement. Show raw output. 
You can see how it came over. Let's kind of take everything. Let's take this output, copy it, and then let's put it in a parse JSON. Parse JSON. So down here, I'm going to use sample payload and paste in our JSON. So this is why I like the indent for. I believe it kind of gives it this format. It makes it look good. The data looks nice and clean. I can understand it. You can see ID, manager, all the data that I want to see. So watch this. When we put title in here, and you put title, so if we search for title in our parse JSON, it's going to put it in a loop, right? It understands that when you collect in SharePoint, you could have multiple rows. So Power Automate is going to assume that you could have multiple rows. Even if you only have one row, Power Automate is going to assume that you could have one row. So it's going to put it in a for each loop. So when we use parse JSON, take a look at the parse JSON here. When we go to the outputs of the parse JSON, you'll see that the first thing it does is body. And then we have title. Right, so body and title. So the trick that I've learned to pull out just the first title is to do an FX formula, and it's gonna be the outputs. So write the outputs of what? The outputs of the parse JSON. So you gotta do Siegel quotes, parse JSON, and this matters. The name of your parse JSON action matters. So this is pulling in the name of my action here, parse JSON. We'll have to retype it again the outputs of my parse JSON. And what do we want? We want the body. Remember body was at the top there. So we want the body. And then we want the first title. This keeps it out of the loop. When you're writing JSON, zero is, is the first one, one. <clears throat> and then what do we want? We want the title. So we're gonna do the output of parse JSON. We're gonna end it one. The first item, the first title, pull through. Now we could do this for every field if we want, but I don't recommend you do it for every field first. Give it a test. Give it a test, make sure your data comes through. So we're gonna go back to Power Apps. Let's press play again, we're gonna press play. Let's do Join Fight Club, let's collect. We've collected Join Fight Club, send the JSON, more than 20 fields, we're sending through Power Automate, we put it in a JSON, we parsed it, we took it, we went to SharePoint, refreshed, we wrote the first line in there, the title. That's how you would pull in 23 fields. We'll walk through every single field. Show all, we'll do every single field. Original ID. And what things that may matter is if your field type is different, if it's a choice, your command here may be a little bit different. All right, so we have all of our fields in here. We're filling them all out. We're coming through with the JSON. We're composing the JSON in a compose statement. Then we're parsing the output of compose. And then for each of the fields, we are taking the outputs of parse JSON, the body, the zero, the title, let's test it out. So we'll go in here, we'll collect, don't talk about Fight Club, send JSON, watch SharePoint, hit refresh, wow, that was quick. There it is, it filled in all the fields. Oh, we forgot notes. We may be, we may be removed notes out of there, uh, but we, we lost notes, but you can see that we have more than 20 fields we passed it in there. If we want to go into specific specific column types, that's going to be ha have to be another video. But for single line text, number field, the simple fields, we are able to pass them through. If you get stuck on something, ask ChatGPT, ask Copilot. They can help you when things are a string or a multi-select. But when you're using Power Apps V2, the main subject of this is to create a JSON, pass all the columns you want to do, and move on and then write to SharePoint or do your next action that you would like to do. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess, and I'll see you next week.